Hey guys, what's up? Toby here and today I've got a tutorial for you to show you how to achieve basic realism in Blender using cycles. Um, it's kind of straightforward, but the main theme I'm going to emphasize during this tutorial is that there is no right way of achieving anything in art. Um, and in Blender, there are so many ways you can do this. This is just my way that I found works all the time. It's not advanced, it's not 100% accurate at all, but it works. Um, and that's what I'm going to show you is just the way that I fa find works to achieve basic realism in Blender. So here we have this image which I made in I would say a couple of hours. Uh, well actually there's an entire dropship which is that which the engines are attached to as you can see. Um, but the actual engine itself didn't take very long at all. Um, as complicated and as complex as it may seem at first glance Actually, it's a load of copy and paste of, of I think only four or five different objects um, to create this uh, whole engine is just a few objects copied and pasted over and over. Um, and then I just used a bit of color grading and color correction and contrast and stuff in Photoshop afterwards. But in terms of getting this object from nothing to built, and then textured didn't take very long at all. So I'm going to show you how I did that right now. Um, here is the actual Blender file. And if you look at the engine in Blender, you can see that it doesn't make any sense. Like technically, n none of it should work. Uh, like these, I have don't, they're not even connected to anything really. They don't make any sense, but they look cool, which is why I added them. Um, <laughs> And again, like, in terms of modeling, you can do whatever you want, as long as it looks kind of cool, then I guess you can get away with it. Obviously, if it, if these were, like, just doing nothing at all, and they would just, I don't know, I don't know. But they do, they do look like they're, as a whole, part of the engine, but, as I say, they wouldn't do anything for it if this was a real engine. And again, this... In entire main section is just a worm uh, mesh, I think it's a worm. Um, and then yeah duplicated for this so that's one object the this this is just a cylinder that I just uh, obviously moved into this shape duplicated for these bits in here and this which kind of looks complicated at first glance as I say is actually a plane uh, if we look at one individual section which I just extruded and extruded and extruded again and again copy and pasted that round in a circle and then duplicated that entire thing to get this and then put it on with the rest of the engine and you get this which if you look at it closely doesn't look very cool or detailed at all once you realize what it is but when you apply it to the entire uh, dropship far away it looks like kind of complicated and detailed and people be like whoa How'd you do that? I bet that took ages and actually no, it just took a lot of copy and pasting, really. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not in, encouraging you to cheat at Blender, but I'm saying that if you do it correctly, it can work. Um, obviously, if I wanted to do like a render of this entire, of just the engine, and I was going to do close-ups of it, this wouldn't work at all because people would instantly go, no, nah, no, nah, that just doesn't work. You obviously just copied and pasted. So... As a whole, the dropship works with it, but up close it doesn't. So again, realism is what you want your audience to see um, your image as. So as I say, this engine isn't going to be, you're not going to see it up close, but as with the entire thing, it works. Um, if I wanted to go into more detail, I could, and I would advise that you do. Uh, but basically, if you want to set up an engine, like I say, this scene was just the initial setup. It works to copy and paste. <laughs> it works um, then obviously the materials I'm just gonna say I know I've seen tutorials where there's like a million different nodes in the compositing section to achieve like a realist realistic look and I'm always like how I'm never gonna know how like why does it why is it so complicated why does it take so long I'm just gonna cry and not do blender ever again I'm just going to say there is a very easy way to do it. Obviously, again, it's not going to look as 100% real as it could. But to start off your materials, 
it's not very difficult at all. You don't need a million nodes. You just need five. Not even five, four. Basically, you when you make a new material, it will start off with the diffuse, and it will go straight into the surface, and you just get like the blank grey uh, sphere here. Just say that. Show you that. All you want to do <laughs> is apply a glossy uh, node and a mix shader. Mix them together because uh, obviously this is going to be a metal, um, any kind of metal object, material, uh, plastic, um, well, like even wood, not obviously like a tree, a tree or anything, but like the wood in someone's house, like a door or something is going to be varnished. So it's going to have a slightly glossy texture to it. Um, anything like that really, there's even like glass and stuff, it will reflect stuff. You just need to look at something in real life and just see if, you know, does it reflect light at all or any kind of, it just does it reflect anything. Um, it's not, you know, paper obviously won't reflect stuff, just plain paper. You just got to think about what reflects and what doesn't. But generally metals is what, you know, most people make in Blender, like metallic objects and stuff like that. Um... Add the glossy shader and yeah, mix that and then an image texture is uh, essential. Even if you're making a, say you're making like a plastic box um, that's just like a red plastic box and you think, well, you know, it's a plastic box. It's not going to need a material because it's just going to be red. Do not just use the diffuse like a red color because nothing is just a, like a plain color. Use some kind of image texture of some sort. Um, just to give it more detail, even if it's very subtle. Um, so for here, yeah, it's the image texture, which is just this I found of Google. Uh, again, this didn't take me long to set up. I thought, right, diffuse into the mix shader, glossy into the mix shader, to the surface output, right, image texture. Found one on Google. Um, let's say for this object here, um, I did, uh, UV unwrapped it. So press U, and because it's a cylinder, I did cylinder projection, which made uh, this shape. Um, and again, like for this main bit in the middle, it's kind of a cylinder shape, but I did a uh, smart UV project. And obviously, like if you were to look up close, none of the, it wouldn't blend together properly. The materials and textures wouldn't work as well as they could do if you actually took time, like a lot of time to make sure it all works properly. But again, I'm just saying, to start off basics of material uh, realism, just apply anything really, and just use the right type of UV unmapping. So don't apply like a cube projection to like a, a sphere, because that's just, you know, it's not gonna work. Um, think about it, have a go, like try, like, again, I thought, oh, it's a cylinder shape, I'll apply a cylinder projection, it didn't work, so I tried the smart UV project, that worked. It's all about what you find works in terms of material UV unwrapping. Um, just apply, yeah, and then once I did that, that's it, the material was all ready to go, uh, the object's all ready. This took me about half an hour, not even that. To, to make it, just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Material applied that to all of this. Um, just different UV mapping makes it look different. The lighting was literally, I had one light in this scene because I knew as a whole, like the dropships in this scene as well. I knew that when I was gonna render it out and put it in like an actual scene, like this image is an image of uh, Google in the background, but I knew it was gonna be a dark scene. So I just used one light. Um, but if you were, say if the, it was going to be flying in the sky, I'd obviously have lots of lights that look up, be like a slightly blue light, a yellow light to replicate that. It being in the sky, because obviously there's a lot of light. But seeing as I wanted a dark scene, just one light. Again, it's your scene. It's what works for you. You need to think about your scene, where the lighting's coming from, and then simulate that light in within Blender. Um... Just for a little bit more emphasis, I added a lamp inside the engine, which is what the orange glow is, as you can see here. Um, okay, this, so imagine I rendered it all out. I added an animation just for this to spin around and that to spin around. Added the motion blur uh, in the render settings. I just clicked on motion blur. 
uh, as you can see, like, uh, like that spins around. They spin. Just added motion blur for a little bit extra realism. Um, that's it rendered without any kind of uh, compositing or like, um, you know, color grading or anything. And it looks alright. Like, it's passable. It's alright. It looks, the materials work. Again, like if you were to zoom in really close, you would see it doesn't work as well. But as a whole, the image does work. Um, then it's just a case of photoshopping or if it's like a mo an animation you rendered out uh, obviously just color grading in whatever editing software you used you can do it in blender if you wanted to but I would recommend I would recommend doing it in Photoshop if you have it um, if you can do it in blender then that's fair enough you can do it in blender um, but just you know I wanted my scene to be wanted it to be a bit more blue get that sci-fi look blue and orange so I just changed the colors to look like that and again as my final point is there is no right way to do anything in Blender or After Effects or Photoshop or anything. It's a case of you figuring out what you want to make and thinking of the best way you can do it. Um, obviously, there, as I say, <laughs> this is by no means the method I would use if, you know, I was going to make something like proper, like a final project for something that was going to be a big, like scene somewhere like a bit massive film, I would obviously take a lot, lot more time in making the model work and look r real and work properly um, and have a lot more shapes and a lot more materials and apply them properly. But to start off with, this works. <laughs> um, and if you, you know, if you have a really basic object, apply the diffuse, apply the glossy, mix it, apply an image texture and you will get not the best result, but you will get a usable result um, that will look realistic um, or in some way realistic. Um, you know, it's just, as I say, up to you to decide and figure out how you want to make your scene. This works for me. I don't know if it'll work for you. Um, I just, for me, it's become the standard to apply this setup of materials to an object whenever I start using Blender, uh, or making an object in Blender, um, and yeah, that's really it for me, I'm, you know, I don't know if this was helpful or not, um, I've had a few requests from people asking how I made certain things look realistic, and I, I don't know if you were expecting this really complex, oh, you know, I know the secrets to Blender in order to make it look realistic, but, you know, I, I wouldn't say I cheat, but uh, I'd say I don't do it as properly as I could, but, it works so that's all that matters at the end of the day as long as the image you're producing looks or passes as realistic that's all that matters so they're they're my little tips and tricks to achieve realism uh, and cycles and blender um, hope that was helpful and if you have any more requests for tutorials um, be sh feel free to leave any comments um, thanks for all the support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you very much. Uh, goodbye.